What's up, New Beginnings Church? Happy Wednesday morning to you, and welcome to our devotional series. We're in that walk through the book of Ephesians, and we're really just stuck in that first section of the book of Ephesians. And here's why we want to, we want to get stuck in there, is because the opening verses of the book of Ephesians is actually a poem. So these first like 10 verses, it reads like, because we put numbers in there so that stuff's easier to find. And we even put periods and sentences in there. But if you really look, the first several verses of the book of Ephesians is one long poem. It's endless. It's one big long sentence. And so in it, he's begun with the idea that, hey, I just need you to know that you're already blessed. You're blessed with every spiritual blessing that you need. And we talked about this yesterday. One of the blessings is the blessing of holiness, that God gives you his holiness. And in return, you reflect holiness back out of gratitude and out of reverence for him. But watch this next verse here. He says, In love he has predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed us in the beloved. Again, very wordy, again, big kind of poetic language here. But I want to go back is that in love he predestined us for adoption. That's what I want to talk about today is that idea of adoption. This is kind of a New Testament spiritual idea. You got to remember a lot of Gentiles, non-Jewish believers were coming into the fold and they were like, wow, this is totally new. God is actually grafting in all these new people into the family of God. Because if you were a Jewish person, you just thought, well, we're the people of God. We're in the family of God already. But watch how God's grafting in all these new people because of their faith in Christ Jesus. And so this idea of adoption becomes a big reoccurring theme in the New Testament. It's not something that you really find in the Old Testament. As a matter of fact, let's just talk about the idea of like your God is a loving heavenly father who has adopted you through Christ Jesus. And so uh, one of the other images that you get out of this adoption thing is like, no, I've got a dad. I'm not a spiritual orphan. I'm not abandoned in this life. I am not without a loving family. And so God is my loving heavenly father. Another new idea that you really don't see in the Old Testament. As a matter of fact, in all the books of the Old Testament, there's only a handful of references to God as father. And it's never in that personal sense. It's always in this kind of broader national sense that God is the father of the nation of Israel. And then, of course, Jesus comes along and just kind of like lights that thing up and is like, oh, no, no, when you pray, you pray the words, our father, or actually, it's, it's again, it's the Aramaic word Abba, which means Papa or Daddy. So it's like, no, when you talk to God, God is your personal loving heavenly father, not just this corporate thing. And so it, it's a powerful thing to think about. And Jesus, again, over 60 different times refers to God as the father. And so I think that's the type of imagery that we're trying to get in on is that there's a spiritual family. Jesus operates as this elder brother that God is my heavenly father and I'm being grafted and I'm being adopted into this spiritual family because of Christ. As a matter of fact, listen to Charles Spurgeon. Charles Spurgeon, really eloquent preacher. He wrote this. He says, a man, when he adopts a child, sometimes, sometimes is moved thereto by its extraordinary beauty or at other times by its intelligent manners or winning disposition. But beloved, when God passed by the field in which you were lying, he found a rebellious child, a filthy, frightful, ugly child. He took it to his bosom and said, sinful though you are, I will cover you with my robe and in your brother's garments, I accept thee. And taking us all unholy and unclean, just as we were, he took us to be his children, his forever. Now, again, that's eloquent. That's better than I can do. But, you know, one of the funny things that, that, that Spurgeon's pointing out here is, is that it's easy to show up, you know, to the adoption clinic and then just pick out the really smart one, the really good looking one, the really well behaved one. And that might be easier. But God looked at you and found you in all your lostness and all your sinfulness and all your foolishness and was like, I'll take that one. I'm sure the angels were like, have you seen Todd? He's not that bright. And God's like, I want him anyway. And they're like, have you seen Todd? He's, he's a foul mouthed kid. I know, I know I want that one. Have you seen Todd? He's rebellious and wild and he's just got all kinds of problems and issues. And God was like, no, no, I want that one. And so I'm thankful today that even though God found me in my sinfulness and in my rebelliousness, he said, I want that one. And so I want you to know God loves you, not because of your merit and your measure and your gifts and your talents. God wants you because you are his. He has predetermined before the foundation of the world, I want you. And God has been in pursuit to draw 
draw you into this loving heavenly family so that he might be your loving heavenly father. Can I get an amen to that? So I want you to know that today, one of the spiritual blessings that you've been given is the blessing of adoption. We are brought into a spiritual family. We have a loving heavenly father, again, who we can go to. We have an elder brother in Christ and we have the spirit of God living within us, drawing us into God's best for our life. Can I get an amen? Church, I love you guys so much. God bless you and I will see you tomorrow.